facilitated by the Virginia Hospital Center Foundation. I want to ask all the participants to leave your microphones on mute and we will reduce the background noise as much as possible. So thank you. If you're logged into WebEx, please join the chat by clicking on the chat button. If you, would, if you are uh, calling in, you can also email at foundation at virginiahospitalcenter.com and we'll try to answer the questions, as many questions as possible toward the end of this huddle. So let's get right to it. I'd like to introduce Dr. Jeff DeLisi, Chief Medical Officer, and Ms. Melody Dickerson, Chief Nursing Officer of Virginia Hospital Center. Thank you both for joining us for this discussion. First question I have is gonna to go to Dr. DeLisi. As of noon today, there are 2,012 cases of COVID-19 in Virginia. Can you please share with us how many cases are in the hospital right now? And then after answering that question, share with all our participants how the hospital's prepared for this particular situation we're in. And most importantly, uh, share with us how um, the testing um, situation is advancing yep. and, um, and, and uh, go from there. So thank you, Dr. Delisi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thanks to all of you um, for calling in and for your support of, of Virginia Hospital Center. We are we're such a fortunate uh, organization to have um, such strong support from the community and um, from donors like all of you that are on this call. We can't do what we are doing without all of your help and support. So we, we really are appreciative of that. So as of this morning, uh, we have 23 positive uh, COVID patients in our hospital. We have another 41 that are awaiting test results. Uh, in our ICU, we have um, 16 either positive or potentially positive COVID patients, and uh, 12 of those were on a ventilator uh, early this morning. So as you can see, and, and what we've seen over the last couple of weeks is the number of positive COVID patients has gone up. It's doubled, um, you know, even within about the last week. Uh, and we've continued to take care of them and, and try to get them better. So what have we done at Virginia Hospital Center over the last month and, and what, um, what's been our planning mm -hmm. process? So, you know, I'll start by saying uh, it, it's been uh, a really amazing experience to get to work so closely um, with the executive team and the leadership team of the hospital. Um, my, my colleague here, uh, Melody, Chief Nursing Officer, um, all the nursing leaders, the physician leaders, the operational leaders, the supply team leaders. It's really been uh, an opportunity for all of us to work even more closely together. And I think what um, what Jim Cole has done over the last uh, 25 or 30 years is built great teams. And when you build great teams, you can get through anything. And uh, I think we're getting through this as, as well as anyone can. Uh, and really it's a testament to, to his leadership, the board's uh, backing and, and vision for the hospital. Um, and again, all of us working really hard together. So what does a day at Virginia Hospital Center look like right now? Well, we have twice daily meetings, uh, one at 9 a.m., one at 4 p.m. every day, where we go over a whole host of different things. We kind of go over the stats. So we look at how many patients are in house, how many patients are in vents, are on ventilators, how many people are gonna come off the ventilators? What do we do if our ICU fills up? Questions like that. And then a lot of our discussion over the last month has really been uh, hinging around two sort of key areas um, and topics of conversation. One is around protective gear. I'm sure a lot of you have seen a lot of discussion about this on the news, that healthcare organizations don't have all the protective gear that they need to take safely take care of these COVID patients. We've been very lucky, and I think we've been very resourceful with our um, inventory that we've been able to make sure that all of our team have all the things they need to safely take care of patients. We have always been aligned with the CDC guidelines. We've always given uh, the staff what they've needed to safely take care of the patients, and we're really, really proud of that. Um, we, our supply team, uh, under the leadership of Charles Fletcher, has done just a tremendous job uh, at kind of day after day trying to find more. It's always trying to find more of these surgical masks, trying to find more of the N95 masks, trying to find more isolation gowns, uh, and we've been pretty successful and been able to be pretty nimble. I think, again, one of the great things about us being a standalone independent hospital is we can just be resourceful very quickly, we can be nimble and we can get what we need. And we've been able to do that and get the right equipment 
um, and the right protective gear for our staff. So that's been really important to me. I know it's important to Melody and all the nurses. Um, and it's something we're, we're proud that we've been able to do that all the way along. Um, that's not to say that, that the battle is over. Uh, we are always looking at it, how many days of each of these supplies that we have and how much more do we think we need. So we're continuing to try to find more places to get the equipment because uh, we don't quite know exactly how long this is all going to last. And that, that, again, has been one of the trickier things to sort of figure out is how much are we going to need and for how long. The other uh, kind of big topic of conversation has been testing. And um, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, we opened the first drive-through testing center in Northern Virginia. And that was really under uh, Melody's executive leadership. She did a great job of working uh, with the team operationally. It was led by James Meaden, who's uh, the director of case management in the outpatient lab. And uh, the two of them really just did a tremendous job working together to get that thing up and running. And we opened that up first and a couple of weeks ago at a time when really it was very, very difficult to get tested. In fact, you couldn't be tested anywhere except in an emergency room. Um, it's amazing to think that was only two or so weeks ago uh, because the situation has moved so quickly. But we're really proud that we were the first to sort of offer that. And what we were able to do with that is to get a lot of these high-risk patients, get them tested. Um, as time has gone on, the bigger challenge has been turnaround time. So when we first opened that drive-through center, and even as, uh, uh, as soon back in time as a week ago, we had to send all of our uh, lab tests to uh, Quest and LabCorp. And uh, the turnaround times for both of those labs has kind of gone up over time as they've gotten increasing demand from around the country to test. Um, initially, the turnaround time was, well, initially we worked with the state and went to the Virginia State Lab, where the turnaround time was two or three days. Then as we did more, we went to LabCorp and it was about four days. Then the turnaround time became seven days. Then it was closer to nine or 10 days. And then uh, about a week ago, through our connection with Mayo and the Mayo Clinic Care Network, we were able to send at least our hospital admitted patients and hospital staff that were exposed and we needed results back from. We were able to send those tests to Mayo for testing and we got a turnaround time of two days. So that's been really, really helpful for us for the patients in the hospital and for our staff getting people back to work and getting people that didn't have COVID off of isolation precautions in our hospital. So that's been a, a great thing and we're really excited about that. Two other things I wanted to mention real quickly. One, um, we are very hopeful we're gonna be in possession of some of the more rapid testing um, within the next, uh, hopefully 48 hours. So that again is gonna help us if we can turn around tests in 15 or 45 minutes. Now, having said that, one of the challenges that we're having, again, like everybody else in the country, is even when you get something like this, you get a really limited allotment. So we're gonna have the ability to do it, but probably for only a very, um, uh, a very small number of tests. So we're gonna watch exactly, and we're coming up with protocols right now of exactly who will get those tests. It'll probably be the oldest, sickest sort of admitted patients where we really need to know rapidly whether they have COVID or not. Finally, uh, one thing I'm really excited about, we were able to get in contact with uh, the chief medical officer of Gilead. Um, Gilead's a biotech company, and, and some of you may have seen that they are uh, running a trial for a drug called remdesivir that uh, there's a lot of hope might be a great treatment for COVID-19. Uh, we just got the papers, signed the papers this morning, so we're going to be in that trial. There are only 90 sites worldwide that are participating in this very important trial. And so we're lucky we're going to be able to offer that to some of our patients here at Virginia Hospital Center. We're hoping we'll get the uh, shipment of the study drug sometime next week. So, again, this is a great example of us being an independent hospital and being able to be really nimble. We had a great team of uh, between our infectious disease leadership, which has been led up by uh, Dr. Rohit Modak, who's done a, just a tremendous job at helping us through this situation uh, in, uh, in conjunction with our um, finance team, our ICU team under the direction of Dr. Mary Margaret Lewis, um, with our pharmacy team, and a whole host of people really putting that together to get ourselves in a trial, a major clinical trial, in just about two weeks. So that's been really exciting that we've been able to do that too. So, you know, in summary, um, Although the numbers are still climbing, uh, we're seeing a little bit more of a leveling off in the day-to-day -day, um, volume through our ER. It's steady and it's heavy, um, but it doesn't seem to be going up that much at the moment. But we are ready. Um, if we had a surge, we, we think we could handle it pretty well. And uh, we've got the right, the right gear. I think we're gonna have the right testing devices. And I know we got the right team to handle it. Uh, 
And we're certainly fortunate to have all of you out in the community supporting us as well. So with that, I'll, I'll hand it back over to Tony. Thank you, Dr. DeLisi, very helpful. I'd like to ask our Chief Nurse Executive, Molly Dickerson, to share with us a little bit of what's going on on the front lines. We're seeing the national media, this, the extreme stress being placed on our frontline clinical uh, workers, especially the nurses. Can you tell us what's going on here at Virginia Hospital Center with the nursing team? Yeah, happy to, Tony, thank you. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank Dr. DeLisi. He's been an executive lead for um, this entire COVID uh, effort and has just done a great job of, of keeping the uh, communication very fluid between all levels of the organization. And um, I think that really has trickled down to the staff at the front line. Um, I think overall morale is really incredible. I think, uh, you know, the areas we have cohorted our patients who are at risk for COVID, as Jeff mentioned, we get a number of patients every day um, who um, have symptoms of COVID. Now, many of them are the same patients we would have gotten a month ago, uh, but because that symptom also arises with COVID, out of an abundance of caution, you have to treat everyone like they have it. So, um, so we have three areas of the hospital, two med surge floors that make up about uh, 50 beds, and an ICU uh, that take our, our at-risk patients. Uh, we're doing that for a number of reasons, uh, but you know the primary reason is to conserve protective equipment for our patients. And um, so, as patients rule out because of this quicker turnaround time on the testing, we can then move those patients to other areas of the hospital. Um, I think uh, you know uh, uh, different part of of COVID has led to the reduction of the scheduled cases that we get every day. So um, it, it, our overall census in the hospital has gone down, which is really nice because um, it gives us an opportunity to give additional support to these areas that are having to don all this PPE, take it on and take it off. Uh, we now have you know, runners out in the hallway, for instance. So if you're in a room and you realize that you forgot something, someone can go get that for you and bring it to you rather than you having to take off everything, go outside, get what you need, and then put everything back on and go back into the room. Um, the staff have really um, been very vocal about their expression of thanks for that support. Um, in the ICU, these patients are extremely critical. And so for every um, four patients, we have that runner position who, who can add that support for the staff. Um, you know, nurses, uh, you know, I think it's, it's very hard for all caregivers at this time. You know, we all have families. I go home every night and I, uh, jokingly, but I'm kind of serious. I tell, you know, my family, I'm the wild card uh, because we can't stay at home and our staff feel the same way. So it's been great to see nurses share strategies about, you know, what they're doing so that when they go home at night, they feel safe. Um, it, you know, changing clothes in the garage and, you know, putting their shoes in a container in their trunk and concealing that so that they're wearing clean shoes home. It's, you know, it's been really good to see them share and express that thanks. Our community has been so generous. Um, we've had everything from like flowers for every department, my personal favorite, uh, and uh, but food gifts. I mean, the staff you know, really are so appreciative of that, and they really do feel the love. Um, we um, we have a COVID float pool, so those areas that have had to uh, downsize because of volumes, so like outpatient therapy is a good example. You know, people don't want to go to the hospital for, for therapy right now, and that's perfectly acceptable. So how can we use those staff so that we take care of them? And because we all work uh, for a paycheck and we want to make sure that we're able to support everyone in our organization through this, this finite period of time, um, and uh, come out on the other side even stronger than ever. So um, I would just end by saying I'm extremely proud of the entire team of nurses and doctors and ancillary staff that are working so well together. Everyone's being extremely flexible and uh, very giving of their time and uh, very careful uh, to make sure that they're protecting themselves and others through this. Uh, and, um, you know, really, I'll echo what Jeff said, you know, really um, 
thankful that I am on the team that I'm on. Uh, I know that every organization doesn't have that and uh, that this looks very different um, at other places. VHC is truly a, a special place. Well, thanks, Melody. That's great. We've got time for a few questions um, from our chat. And so this first question is for Dr. DeLisi. If someone has, has or has had the virus, is there going to be an opportunity for that person to donate antibodies later on to benefit um, uh, healthcare workers or others to avoid coronavirus? That's a great. That's a great question. So um, the antibody testing. So one of the uh, one of the things that is just starting now um, are some of the first antibody tests to see whether people um, are forming antibodies to COVID and whether they really are immune to them. Um, but we don't even have tested that test doesn't even exist right now. I think Mayo started theirs literally within the last couple of days. So um, we are certainly in contact with Mayo about that. Um, and, uh, you know, whatever we can do. Yeah, we, we want to do that. Um, I think, you know, the, the bigger, um, the bigger picture solution for this is going to be a vaccine. And um, the vaccine trials have started in a couple different places around the country. There's several trials going on. I know I think Johnson and Johnson uh, has an agreement with the government to sort of ramp up um, manufacturing production to be able to to make a hundred a billion um, vaccines. So uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, you know we're we're hopeful within the next year there'll be a vaccine uh, and that that will end this. Um, but um, the antibody testing is going to be really important and I think may really help us to contain this if, as some are saying, there's a fall, um, sort of another surge in these infections in the fall. Thank you. Another question, is Virginia Hospital Center collaborating with other hospitals in our region to share what we learn as well as resources? Yeah, so that's a good question. So there's a um, so a couple of things. One, there's a, a Northern Virginia Hospital Alliance that was created after 9-11. And so there's really good communication between the different hospitals in Northern Virginia. And it tracks um, kind of bed utilization, ICU utilization, ventilator utilization. In addition, we have a really strong um, Virginia Health and Hospital Association. I know Melody uh, is taking part in um, it's weekly CNO calls with all the chief nursing officers across the state. I'm actually, I'm chairing the statewide CMO call. So I actually had that earlier this morning. So it's all the chief medical officers across the Commonwealth. Again, sharing stories. What are the challenges? What are we looking at? Um, so there's a lot of different venues um, where we're sharing information. I've gotten random texts from uh, different CMOs across the state. They have questions for me. I have questions for them. So, you know, again, I think in times like they, this, there's not really not so much competition it's just how do we help each other to keep all of our staff safe and take care of the patients and i think that's what just everybody uh, across the whole commonwealth and across the whole country in healthcare is really focused on that's excellent so this is a question that i'll pose to both of you we'll ask melody to answer this first if there was one the most important thing that you want our local arlington residents to know about how things are here at virginia hospital center right now what would you want to share with them um, I think you should feel um, very secure that you uh, live in an area that you have such a great team available to take care of you should you need help. Um, I think, you know, there are, um, there are a lot of areas in this country where the staff uh, and the physicians do not have the equipment that they need to properly protect themselves and their patients. And um, I'm really proud of how we've all banded together to um, really follow the CDC guidelines and make sure that everyone is safe in caring for their patients and uh, that our staff feel that security. Um, and you should too. I, I would echo what Melody said. And I, I mean, if there's any um, message to the community is, yeah, I mean, we're, I think we're doing, we're doing, our staff is doing well, we're doing well. We have the PPE that we need. We've got the right testing. Uh, you know, again, hopefully we'll have great testing in another 48 hours here. Um, we've got access to the kind of leading cutting edge clinical trials for COVID. Um, and we've got 
it just fabulous physician and nursing leadership across the hospital. So we're doing well. But what we need from all of you um, and what I would want the whole Arlington community to know is stay at home, follow the social distancing. Um, this, is, uh, this is real and people get really sick. And most of the patients that are getting really sick follow what we've seen across the rest of the country. They're older than 50. Most of them have comorbidities like hypertension or underlying lung disease or underlying cancers. Um, but the tricky thing about this is that those of us that are, you know, a little bit younger, uh, you can get this and not even know it, and you could be shedding the virus and not even know it. And so when any of us aren't um, staying at home and we're not social distancing, um, especially younger members in the community, um, you're putting the older members of the community at risk because they're the ones that can really, um, there's, there's high rates of morbidity and uh, mortality associated with older, older people getting this. And, and we, none of us want to see that. And uh, it's on all of us, I think, to really follow this, to, to keep those patients healthy. And again, to keep our hospital uh, going safe, because the, the more people that stay at home, the less people are going to come in, into us to, to, for us to take care of. And uh, the quicker we see that curve steep off uh, or calm down, the faster we're all going to be able to get back to normal life, which is, which is what we all want. One final question before I let you go to your next meeting. It looks like there's going to be possibly a national mandate about wearing masks. Basically, the CDC changing their position on that. Um, how, how does that actually help? And is it necessary from your perspective? So, um, you know, a couple of things. I think, you know, look, we're, we're wearing masks here. Uh, and we're doing it all around the hospital because we don't, you know, as I said before, people that are uh, asymptomatic, they don't have any symptoms, could still have the virus and you still could be shedding the virus. And so when you're wearing a mask, you're reducing virus that you could be spreading just from coughing or talking. And you're also protecting yourself, right? So if even if you're six feet away from somebody, if they cough or they talk, anything that goes through the air, you've got some sort of blockage. So are any of these things totally scientifically proven that it's gonna end the virus spread? No, is it safer? 100%, uh, you're just adding layers of protection uh, like anything else. And we made that move on Monday where we had all of our staff and visitors that come through the hospital, uh, we want them wearing masks because we just, we wanna make sure that we are minimizing the risk of exposure uh, of our staff, our medical staff and, and our visitors. Um, and as we saw the numbers of COVID patients climb in our hospital, that signified to us that, hey, there is real community spread now. We gotta take this seriously, we gotta get everybody in mask. And I think what you're hearing from um, our government is they're seeing more and more people around the country become infected and they're making that same decision saying, gosh, there's so many people infected right now, we gotta, we want people putting something over their face uh, to help again, uh, prevent that uh, risk of, of getting and transmitting uh, COVID-19. Thank you, Dr. DeLisi. Thank you, Melody, for your insightful briefing today. We're extremely grateful to both of you for your leadership. Our community wants to thank you. Uh, we, want to, we want to acknowledge the courage of your teams to be on the front line to keep us safe. So this concludes our health huddle for today. Please join us next Friday at 1.30. In the meantime, please visit us on the web, www.bhcfoundation.com forward slash COVID-19, that's C-O-V-I-D-1-9. We'll have additional information on how you can help, and there'll be a recording of this health huddle that will be posted there as well. So stay healthy, everybody. Be safe and goodbye.